Go back, everyone, to fate, the rise of madness. We last, <laughs> we last left off in the middle of a fight of, uh, they're trying to rescue the <laughs> ship of uh, what appears to be a merchant ship of the Karaki Corporation from a uh, very large and two of our ships. tentacle monster. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Quetzal, <laughs> it is your turn. I'm going to rage. Okay. And then I'm going to attack the tentacle that is holding me. All right. Are you going to uh, reckless so you have a spell roll? Of course. Good deal. Okay. It's not advantage, so we'll take the first roll, whatever that is. That is 26, Perfect. so that will hit. Okay. Uh, nice. <coughs> 13. Or something like that. Apple pen. There we go. Okay. <laughs> I can't try to break it. Try to break the grapples. A bonus action, can I? No, that is an action. Damn. Yeah. Yep. Ooh. Okay. Let's see what happens. Clank. Well done, by the way, Quetzal. We're gonna move on. Uh, so you, what are you attacking it with? Winged mirage. Uh, Butcher's knife sword oh, thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. It cuts deeply in, uh, dealing pretty tasty damage. And now we're to Clank, who is being held aloft by this uh, lovely gigantic tentacle. <clears throat> I use special beam cannon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are you using uh, six of the 30 yeah. charges? Okay. Yeah, I'm going to sit there and like just twirl my hands around next to this thing and just start shooting it over and over again. Okay, that is uh, six six magic missile missiles. Oh, goodness. Okay. So, that is full 18 damage. 18 <clears throat> Damages. Okay. Great. And as a free action, I shit my pants. <laughs> oh, I can't. I ink everywhere. That will surely cause them to drop you. Yeah, I slip out. Oh, bonus action. Yeah, I cause some, some, uh, some oil to drip out. Maybe I slip away. Uh. Serendipity. Wait. You want to use? your bonus action to emit some of your internal oil yeah to try <laughs> yeah to grease yourself up yeah to grease myself <laughs> up okay um i will allow that uh so give me a serendipity roll and because you're doing that we're going to say oh. that you take a little tiny bit of damage uh from that because you're kind of like purposefully <laughs> It doesn't matter. Really, oh, okay, six it. damage. Oh gosh, you rolled a four on a D one hundred. That's yeah, terrible. Yeah. Jesus. Christ. Or it's like <laughs> golf, and that's really good. No, that's real bad. Oh, okh Okay. <laughs> you rolled a four. That's amazing. Jesus. That's amazing. So you take six damage, and you, uh, you do get a little greasier than you were. Uh, but to no avail, it seems. This thing's strength is too much. It has you in too tight of a grip. Wow. Okay. Let's see what happens next. Ryland. Okay. Uh, so, here's the... Here. <laughs> Round... Probably gonna go with uh, Eldritch Blast a couple times again. Okay, you okay. can just reach the uh, the one that is <coughs> grabbing Quetzal. 
Uh, I'll aim low. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Troy, can you go back there? Not bad. Okay. Uh, so that was your first blast. Go ahead and roll to see if you hit with your second one. Nice. Both hit. Cool. Roll that damage. One sec. Ooh. Okay. Hey. hey. 15. Oh, right. It's max. That's awesome. Okay. So, 20... Okay, great. Great, great, great. Uh, Krishna, you've thrown three javelins so far. Or, I'm sorry, two javelins so far. Um, because that's all you can really do from the docks. Because the ship is out. How far are these three dudes? Um, the tentacle is just barely within the, the range of the javelin. And you, so you have disadvantage when you when you roll to hit, because you don't have sharpshooter. I'm sure. Okay, so it's like sixty feet. So it's beyond breath weapon range. Yes, for sure. Unless you can somehow get a very fast fly speed to get out there, uh, probably. I mean, it's up to you what you want to do, but. And there's so Clank is currently being grappled, and there's nothing we can do about that. No, Clank has grappled too far out of range from where you are. Yeah, but, I thought I was saving but them. You can uh, sort of nub of uh, the tentacle that was holding Quetzal is still kind of sticking out. So you could, in right. theory, get another another hit in. Oh, wait, it's making me draw. Stop doing that. I don't want to do that. Um, Let me, uh... Can I control the ship even if I'm not... I know the ship's not out right now, but let's say the ship got out. Can I control it even if I'm not on it, or do I have to be on it to control you can, it? You can control it even though you're not on it. Hmm. Yeah, but it's... Clank, it's like in, in one of Clank's internal compartments right now. Yeah, and he can't, can't very well get to that. <laughs> Yeah, Don't right touch me. Question. Break I'll it I'll apart. Toss another, <laughs> I'll toss another couple of javelins at whatever target I tossed them at last time. Ooh, okay. Um, you can oh. only throw one javelin, and that's just advantage, and that's a hit for over here. So ah. you just hit the little nubbin before it pulls down into the water. Uh, <laughs> oh, What's up with all these 20s? Roll your damage. It's not a crit because it's at disadvantage, but it's still a hit. I know. They were rolling 20s like mad earlier. I'm rolling 4 and D100s. <laughs> Stupid. So to roll damage, you just click the, the javelin name. So like, oh, okay. yeah. So click the one that, that says, yeah, 18. There you go. Great. So that's, um, Six the strength damage. bonus doesn't come in with that one? It does. It, oh, okay, gotcha. It, gotcha, gotcha. It, Cool. It rolled a two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Nice. So. Great. Oh, sweet! I'm free. You are free. Good. 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 Okay. The thing that it's going to do. So it is its turn. It has done lots of tasty damage to the ship. And it has a singular individual grappled, which is to say, Clank. And what it's going to do is throw, it's going to fling Clank in a random direction, and you'll be knocked prone. If you strike a solid surface, you take 1d6 bludgeoning damage for every 10 feet you are thrown. The target is thrown at another creature. Ooh, that's fun. That creature must succeed on a DC 18 dexterity saving throw. 
or take the same damage and do not spread. Okay, great. First, we have eight directions. I'm gonna roll a d8 and see what direction you are thrown, Clank. All right. Let's see what happens. By the no way, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Um, one will be. Let me just show you. So one is here, and then it goes. We'll say clockwise. All right. So two, three, etc. Okay. Uh, let's see what it is. Nope. Nope. No. 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 Nope. Okay. Two. That means you're going to be thrown out this way, which you don't hit. You don't technically hit a solid surface, unless you count the water as one. I want to skip like a rock. <laughs> Let's see. Where's that ruler thing again? I must have the hardest time finding the stupid ruler. Wait, could I um could I use a luck point to try to like fling my like when he goes to throw me I like hold on and try to throw myself back on the boat? Uh repeat that one more time. Uh so he goes to throw me, I wanna use a luck point to to be able to like okay he throws me and i like hold on and i like swing and i'm trying to swing back onto the boat like Ooh, this way okay uh that's a fun idea if you spend two luck points i will allow that all right i'll do that okay and you so it goes to throw you and the way that it does that is it, you know, rears back to throw in that direction, which in this case is over the ship itself. And you, because you were kind of greased before, uh, managed to, in that moment, and with your incredible luck, slip through the, the grasp of this creature and fall about 20 feet down to land onto the ship. Ha <laughs> Which is very good. Because you'll actually Yay. be taking less falling damage than you would have taken throwing damage. There you uh, go. Which puts us at uh, one. You take one point. That's good. I did a roll. But that one point was a splinter. I'm like, ah! Uh, we don't oof. have flesh for splinters. But... Uh, that, uh, that whole, like, terror area really fucked with me all right I, i'm like still thinking i'm a little bit human <laughs> think of like still think i'm a little bit yeah, human so funny. i'm grunting and stuff <laughs> um, now you actually when you land because the ship is heavily damaged right when you land uh the floor beneath you actually buckles and you kind of fall into the ship uh and the inside of the ship has Lots of, like, crates that have the Crocky logo on them. Um, there's... Most of it's labeled food, as far as what you can see immediately around you. And then, like, it's very... It's, it's also quite clear that uh, there's about... Almost, almost clear. Two feet mm -hmm. of water in, in, like, where you land. Kind of down in there. And uh, it's rising rapidly which for certain other characters would be a problematic but it's not the, the presence of water isn't so much an issue for you because you don't really have to breathe does he not rust hell no 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 he's his body is magically um, mm. protected Delicious. from things like rust so good for you Mike. I can beat a bird's ass, Bob. Yeah. If you, <laughs> I don't think you can. I think I can. The final thing that happens is that the tentacles. Steve Irwin, your ass. The tentacles that you, that everyone can kind of see above, um, all dip back under the water. I mean, one of those, like, 
Fellowship of the Rings, like that it all <laughs> back and then um, seven thousand of them come out at once. You know, you the the combat to, to sort of for the sake of brevity, um, you can see that there is a significantly large creature uh, moving quickly back out to the ocean. Yay! To the depths. Uh, so you have chased away, uh, for now anyway, you've chased away the beastie. Good Fuck job. off, Kraken. Yay! Yay! Thank God! I didn't die. Oh. Now, there is the small problem of the gigantic merchant ship uh, sinking in the harbor. Um, oh, smash. smash and grab, y'all! Can I... There are also, by the way, there's about 18 or so people between, like, 15 to 20. It's hard to get a precise count. But there's quite a few people that are treading water at this point who have sort of abandoned ship. Ah, they're fine. Are we trying to stop the ship from sinking? That's up to you. I mean, you don't have to. Like, we can we can try, but we gotta at least save the people. Yeah, I mean they're uh, sailors. I'm sure they can swim. They're not Luffy or anything. They can swim. That's true. Uh, it's very true. Could Bob carry them if he was flying? He can. I am flying. Uh, I mean, he, I would say that he has sufficient strength to do that, but he would have to kind of do it one at a time. And yeah, uh, okay. Um, Clank yeah, pop our ship out. We'll pull whatever yeah. off of this ship we need and put it onto our ship while Quetzal flies around saving sailors. Well, the problem is the ship that you have takes two minutes to fully materialize as a full vessel. Uh, is this is this ship gonna sink that fast? Oh, yeah, the ship will be sunk very quickly. Like, in what's the... our interest in it? Are we trying to get something off of it? Not necessarily. It was just under attack. It was like sailing quickly uh, for the port, and then it came under attack, and you guys kind of helped to uh, mitigate as much of the damage as you could. But it's still... Excellent. The good news here is that it's reasonably close to the docks. So, in theory, what is salvageable can be, with relative ease, salvaged. Uh, oh, cool. Because of, you know, especially given sufficient time, Clank could enlarge and, you know, pull some of that stuff out of there anyway. It'll just take right on. take time, and people can get water breathing and stuff like that, and they can begin that process. But the priority now, and this is up to you, but... Typically, at this point, the priority is rescuing the people in the water. Because the water yeah, is that. cold. Like, it's not... <laughs> it's ocean water, it's ocean water. You know. Hypothermia is a thing. Right. And it sets Maybe on it fast. Sets on okay, well, I'll begin rescuing people. We can do, we can do two, two minutes to, to save them. Yeah, save the fuckers. Yeah, for sure. Get the boat out. Like I'm sure that would be all right. Trying to tread water for two minutes. All right, Clank, you are in the ship that is sinking. Um, based on the rate that the level, the upper level that you're on is filling, um, I uh, you'll be you'll be underwater very soon. And that's fine. Um, I'm looking around. Uh, do I see... Okay, can I look around to see if there's any kind of escape? Uh, so I guess people are down here stuck with me. Is there any kind of like way out for I can shoo people towards? Um, so in front of you and in the back as well, you see where those black lines are? Yeah. There are huge gashes in the ship that have uh, almost like broken the ends off like they're they're definitely big enough that that you could get through 
that people can get through. Um, you do notice that there are a handful of people on this level. Um, some of them, one of them is like crouched, kind of hidden uh, in a bit of a panic, of course. Um, some of them are frantically trying to get out. And the door, because again, when you're in a when you're in that level of panic, you don't you can't think straight. Typically, uh, uh, so they're like trying to open the hatch up to get on top of the ship, but something's holding it shut. How? Um, so I fell into the ship, correct? Yes, you did. How far did I fall in? You fell into the the first level, the sort of. As level. in, like, how big, how how much is above my head? Like, how, how tall is it inside of where I'm at? Um, this is a primarily storage area. It's about nine feet up from where you are. It's like your head. You can get on tiptoes and see out onto the top of the deck. From okay. Like from from your enlarged form. You're you're not you're 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 like right. normal form now. Yeah, so what I wanna do is I wanna grow so I'm at nine feet. Okay. And and I want to make myself into like a ladder kinda. Like I have my knee out, I have my arm out, and I have my other hand grappled on top and I have people trying to climb up to me to leave. Okay. You you kind and, of call to them to get them to come your way. Yeah. Uh, give me a persuasion check. I uh, say, hey, you guys want to die? <laughs> All right. <laughs> come with me. Uh, persuasion. All right. Okay. Ten. Is just enough. I would say. Given the state of things, a ten technically would not be enough. However, uh, in their frantic Wait. attempt to try to get out uh, and seeing another possible route, they will begin to make their way to you. But it's already at three feet from two feet. Like it's filling very quickly. Uh, so they're they're going to try and make their way. Uh, Quetzal, you said you wanted to. Yeah, I'm gonna start flying people off. Uh, you want to start pulling people toward the shore or toward the docks, rather? Yeah. Okay. Um, that's gonna take. And your movement speed's fifty. Sixty. Sixty. Okay. So you can. He's a strong bird. Grab and pull. I'm trying to think here because so it it would take you essentially. Two, three, basically like three rounds or so per person to pull them to the docks. Because okay. you're, you're approximately 120, 140 feet away from the docks. So sort of keeping that in mind, you begin pulling people to the docks. Um, the other... The other people... Uh, it, in your group, of course, help the people up, help the sailors up, and uh, I would, I, I guess, what do you do? What does everyone on the docks do once they start pulling people up? Like how? Are we pulling them up out of water? Yeah, for sure. Oh, I'm going to use press digitation to cast it three times to create a one foot cubic area of warm air. So they can walk through it and draw off more. So they don't okay. get hypothermia. Very good. Okay. Great. Thanks. Good job. That's that's good. So you, I, I think that you can just use press digitation to dry them off. I don't know if you can draw off actual dang stuff. Are there any of them dying that are at what well, would be zero hit points? Some of them no, are heavily wounded. I can't do anything about that. Um, but there are a few that Quetzal brings along that he kind of finds 
floating in the water that are uh, dying or close to dying. So I use spare um, the dying, which stabilizes them, and I can use it at will. That's handy. Yeah. So you go around and you start stabilizing some of them to start pulling up. I guess uh, Quetz, uh, Krishna can help with that too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because he has he has Pally powers. Yeah, and I'm nice. a special medic as well. Hmm. I'm not. You are what? What'd you say? I have a proficiency in medicine, so I can stabilize my fuckers as well. That's true. That's true. Again, for sake of brevity, you end up pulling uh, 16 people from the water. And Clank saves two from below decks. Uh, You find out from... the sailors that there were more people but they were lower below decks and probably unless they had some means of water breathing probably are not doing too well down there at this point maybe there's an ear pocket we can save them it's been several minutes (laughs) they're really good at holding their breath Swimmers. Uh, well, that's fair. And with some of their constitutions, they might have survived for up to three or four minutes. They suffered for even longer. Because uh, it's it's uh, you can hold your breath for one minute per point of constitution modifier. So, yes, some of them were able to hold out for longer than others, but still, there are some drowned people down there, and that's unfortunate. But you saved 18, which is not nothing, you know? They're all extremely grateful and are... Uh, concerned about the ship of course and the contents thereof Uh, the Karaki family of course not all of them I will say that probably Orion and uh, the, the guard show up relatively shortly thereafter and that they kind of come with like blankets and some additional healing is needed to get people on their feet <clears throat> so they can begin the cleanup process. And Orion, <clears throat> who all of you except for Ryland know as Kane's older brother. kind of approaches you with a very grateful look on his face and he says uh, we were very lucky that you were here I say yes you were and we thank you for assisting these sailors in their survival Uh, this is We've seen this creature before, but it's been years since it has come this close to the shore. I am unsure as to why, but, and there may not be a reason at all behind it other than it just happens to be in the area, but If you can investigate that, maybe that might be good. We can wait and see what the, uh, if it comes back, but <coughs> might be better to see if it's being 
goaded by something or otherwise sort of pushed here. I understand you also have a vessel that can go deep underwater. Ah. Uh -huh. So that is something, obviously, you don't have to do that. Uh, it's just a, it's more of a request than any sort of demand. Uh, but. That sounds like fun. It is. It would be beneficial to us if you did. And I can probably scrounge up some degree of compensation for it. I don't know how much I can get, but. What, what, what did you try to share? Specifically? Hmm? Is there like an intelligent way to track the creature? Well, um, some people have... Uh, there are some casters who can use magic to locate creatures. There yeah, are... so let's hire one of those. All I'm saying is this sounds like a great opportunity for torpedoes. There are means of scrying, perhaps, also using magic. magic. Uh, there's lots of different ways that you could do it. Uh, there's probably not a way to do, for example, just like a standard sort of tracking because it's hard to do that underwater. Yeah, <laughs> right. You know, with the lack of actual tracks yes <clears throat> well let's uh let's hire the most uh reasonable method of that um okay. between expense and actually being able to do it okay locate creature i believe has a limited range scrying does not provided there they have to be on the same plane I believe but not necessarily nah. within a certain range then we'll hire the scryer I don't believe we have a scryer here Piss. in town uh, there are places you could go yeah find them any any we're we're a reasonably sized city. We have our share of clerics and the like. Um, we have a, a couple of wizards, but none that I know of that can do scrying. So maybe it would be you can go up, go north to sort of northwest to Alea Car. It's the nearest big yeah. city. That might have. have you said that this, uh, this, this creature rarely attacks, so it probably wouldn't do to just wait and see. Do what? I said you, you said that this creature rarely attacks, and hasn't been attacking a lot lately. No, we haven't seen it this close to the the dock ever, and we haven't seen it attack our ships uh, for several years. So, How often do you have Karaki ships through here? Every well, day. Every day. I mean, that's you're you're in a dojo, which is the Karaki Corporation's uh, primary right, right. location. So every day. Yeah, let's uh, let's uh, let's go to where we need to go in order to um, hire somebody that can scry and get this job taken care of for us. Okay, um, we will. We're beginning final prep for the. 10 day of the Neorids, so um, that'll be, let me see actually, I gotta I need to check on that because I'm not 100% sure. You're getting close to, is it that, there it is, the 10 day of the Neorids, which is a time period during the year where you do not want to be on the waters at all. Let's see. Where is 
Right. Do, do, do. Okay. You're there. And the phone is right there. Okay, so there are about 20. You have 24 days in game before the 10 day of the Nereids begins. Um, that is it. So, okay. Let me kind of explain what that is. So it's not quite as confusing. Uh, the sentient creatures that live in the ocean have these crystals that they use for light called sun crystals, I think. Something like that. I don't remember the exact name I, I coined them. But they have to be recharged every year. And because it lasts the whole year, it takes about 10 days or so to do that. Sometimes less, depending upon how frequently it's used. But for that 10-day period, ships don't go out into the, the waters because of all the seafaring the the sea dwelling creatures that come to the surface to charge their crystals and uh, any ship that is found out there is pretty quickly dismantled by angry water dwellers so they just don't they just don't do ships what do you keep sending images for? <laughs> Try that one. That's more the madness I feel like uh, that we're doing. <laughs> I don't understand. What are these? What the? Oh, goodness. This guy's crazy. <laughs> Some wacky, wild, crazy people. Yeah. Complete madness. I was beginning to wonder if anyone was actually paying attention or not. Yeah, you should share them in uh, Discord so the image just pops up. Yeah. Well then. There you go. So, uh, yeah, also, it's, you know, less confusing for the stream people. <laughs> for the Twitch viewers. <laughs> or YouTube viewers, I guess, if that's, if that's the way you prefer to watch this. That's the way I watch it. Mm-hmm. What do you do? You have... Obviously, this is just something you c could do. It's not something you have to do. Uh, you go. You would be paid, obviously, for uh, that service. You Orion, lack of money. Orion does look a bit confused at your newest member, uh, and and is is uh, says you picked someone new. Uh, who's who's this? Uh, who who are you, sir? <coughs> I say he likes my dancing. He's okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh well, that's great. Uh, I have never seen this gentleman before. Uh, I'm Rylan Westmore. I was visiting, looking at some of your technology. It interests me quite a bit. Ah, yes. Very good. Uh, are you with the guild? Or uh, what is your affiliation? Not at the moment. Just more of a wanderer and a scholar. Ah, okay. Interesting. Well, we have a uh, very expensive library, if that's something that you uh, is of interest. And we have many pieces of technology. You are free to peruse at your leisure. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Thank oh, you. am I able to communicate with uh, my tablet thing to 
see if it happens to know anything about the monster that, you know, attacked. Yes. Yes, yes, you can. <laughs> well, I kind of like to do that. Yeah, okay. Kraken, a water Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Thanks, Joe. Uh, <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah, it was a Kraken, for sure. Neat. Yeah. Anything in particular you're looking for? Uh, natural habitats in underwater areas. Mmm. Okay. Let's see. Generally... And a kraken lives in dark depths, usually a sunken rift or a cavern filled with detritus, treasure, and wrecked ships. Ah. Yes. Is the one in this area known? Like? Like this specific kraken. They get kind of old, don't they? They do get like old. Kill you. So um, do I, this it particular know one, uh, as far as Slate knows, is uh, is unknown. Neat. Thanks. Yeah. Is this anything oh. about what they like to eat? Get some bait? I was going to say, does it, do we know anything about the oceanic geology of the area? Like the big caves big enough to house it? Uh, well, the ocean yeah. in the southerly direction does get to be very deep in places. Uh, there are not necessarily a huge amount of these, but there are enough that it would be fairly tedious to search them all individually. Okay. Does that does that make sense? Yeah, I got you. Okay. We know what it likes to eat. Semen. <laughs> you uh <laughs> you also know Slate will tell you this um, you uh, Krakens can frequently control lightning not always well, but frequently not disconcerting <clears throat> yeah neat How do you kill one? <laughs> uh, do dealing sufficient damage to it will. Okay, cool. That's what I was hoping. Certainly yeah. Do that. Smack it till it's dead. It's it's not one of those things like the Terrasque where you have to like wish it away. <laughs> you have to wish it away. <laughs> oh God, yeah. Yeah. Hey, sometimes you gotta check though, man. Sometimes you gotta check. The, uh, yeah. In third edition. Uh, the Terrask, you have to get the Terrask to like negative, at least negative 50 hit points, and then use Wish to, to, to get it away. Otherwise, it just keeps healing. It's oh! That's third edition, though. It's a little bit different in fifth. It's still a nasty creature. But. And I will say this um, you guys did. 222 damage to this Kraken. Uh, which is very good in three rounds, by the way. Uh, and he kind of scared away. That's a little bit shy of half of its hit points. Nice. Give or take. Depends on what you roll, really. But <laughs> I assume it was mostly Corey. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in one. Yeah, that was a very, very nice first round. Yeah. yeah. You did most of that damage in the first round. <laughs> I mean, Amazing. hey, sometimes, sometimes you roll really well. Amazing. Very good. All right, so we've got some options here at this point. Number one, uh, Ryland did prove to be very helpful. So, I um, mean, it's up to you guys. Uh, because you are a couple of 
party member short yeah. given current events. Not that anyone has died per yeah. se, uh, but they've they've had other things to do and have left the party, uh, even if it's temporarily. They have. So, what's the plan? Hmm. Well, what do, what do you guys Sacrifice? think? Nah, well, I feel like we should go. We to we have we have time to think this out. Um, prepare a strategy. Yeah. One more thing uh, that you get from Slate Riley. Uh huh. Uh, he says, uh, "I I do not recommend." Fighting this creature at this point head on. Of course. Because its uh, its power is far greater than you and your groups. <clears throat> and then I look at him and I flex. Oh, I, I think you can't. I think we can handle it. Are you uh, sure? Only. Ryland can hear Slate unless Slate reaches out oh. to you, and he hasn't yet. Uh, I'll relay the part about maybe not attacking it head on. Okay. Not the rest of it. I'm gonna <laughs> hold off on that for a minute. Gotcha. Yeah. So right. then I reckon we should wait until the fucker re emerges. Probably. I mean, if it attacks once, it'll probably come back. Right. And we'll be ready for it. Orion uh, kind of chimes in here, too, and says we will be uh, outfitting our ships with additional defenses uh, Need torpedoes. for Muslims. such an occasion should it attack again uh, at least theoretically we will be more prepared for dealing with it if nothing else for just to chase it off but yes we will be adding more weapons to our ships maybe bringing on a few more mages to protect the ships <sighs> Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll you need rowboats. Out. You guys need rowboats. Oh, uh, that oh, the ship, shit. the ship that you you Damn, were Jesus. on had Damn. like escape boats, but they got pretty wrecked by the kraken. So, the tentacled beastie. Where are you going to next? I, let, well, let me uh, let me give you some options. Yeah, but say I need to know. Yeah. I don't even know if I'm part of their group yet. That's true. You you haven't, you haven't had that. Chat you yet. said you like you're you're good in my book. I mean, be like screw this guy. I'm still deciding if I want to sacrifice him to the kraken or not. <laughs> Yeah. I was like thinking, maybe not that plan. I don't... Did Did you say that out loud, Quetzal? Yeah. <laughs> did, did I say that out loud? Yeah. I think you did. That's hilarious if you did. <laughs> I mean, I mean I it sounds like uh, something... Sounds very like Quetzal. Quetzal. Chat? I suppose, Chat. I suppose we'll give him a chance. Does, Neat. does Ryland even want to join this group? Yeah, at least long enough to kill a crack, and I'm barely listening. I'm more concerned about Slate looking at him and reading stuff. Yeah. Um, it's also quite possible that the constant presence of an artifice is of interest to Ryland. 
He's going to steal you, turn you into a sex Probably robot. Slate. <laughs> Not necessarily but, that, that Slate would But stuff only. <laughs> watch out. You know, Slate, <clears throat> Slate is, is interested in the artifice race uh, sort of more esoterically. Um, there is the theoretical option of if you can find this is like maybe down the road kind of thing but uh, if it ever becomes relevant for Slate to have more uh, independent mobility it would be possible to maybe or be cool. that kind of thing uh, but for now Slate is more than happy to observe and relay information in equal parts uh, through the tablet that you have and all is good Is that all the conversation you want to have as far as bringing Ryland on board with the group? <clears throat> Anyone else want to chime in on that? Um, yeah, well, you feel Chris I three questions to ask. Um, how many walkers have you killed? <laughs> 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 Joking, of course. How many humans have you, have you killed? How many humans? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Ryland, in his time, because Ryland is the same level as you guys, has probably killed some undead in the past. I've seen some shit. Right. <clears throat> yeah. There are hints. It's it. It's not always present in Ryland's appearance but you can occasionally see glimpses of uh, like the because like you said he, he, he does look tired in general um, but sometimes he gets some like haunted haunted looks it's, and it, it's not it's very fleeting it's almost like um, micro expressions because you know Ryland has has learned over time how to keep that mostly in check I would say because you know, you're you're a haunted one, right? So yeah. you're, you're you're after. Yeah, of course that's something that you can reveal later at your leisure. Um, but I wrote some more of the background thing attached to that link. Totally. Okay. Oh, okay. I will. I'll do that. I'll check it out. But little hints, little glimpses of a. what I'm looking for uh, he's he's had some bad experiences in the past <laughs> that occasionally reflect through to be fair most of you have had similar kinds of things but his almost seems worse than anything you've ever seen before but it's, that's the most emo thing I've ever. Heard. <laughs> I yeah. feel like this, stuff, this is what he's telling no, us. Yeah. I've seen. Well, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's your very good ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ryland is now a. Uh, We'll say a probationary member. Yeah, of, time for initiation. We're gonna show in your chat. Of the stable <laughs> Sorry, group. Go 
Oh yeah, oh, by the way. Steamrollers for nothing. That's our name, Steamrollers. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, Cleveland Steamrollers. <laughs> Cleveland and again, <laughs> and again, I'm I'm like seventy five percent sure we're good guys. <laughs> yeah, that's a passing grade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now that <laughs> yeah, the whole introductory business has been taken care of, where to? What's next on the agenda? All right, well, Kri Krishna, you guys, what, what, do you, what do you say? So what were we about to do before we, like, as we were about to leave town? Oh, yeah. What the fuck? Where, where were we gonna, going before like, the Kraken? Like, we just dropped off all the money to, to my family. And that's up to you. We ended it after you dropped the money off. Um, you had a handful of options at that point. I think I wrote them down. Hang on. Yeah. Uh, return money. Note from the book to travel southern. Mm -hmm. Saz Sazier. Yeah. Is, is... Sazier okay. in Dracunius. Sazier. There it is. Um, that was a note you found in the book that, by the way, would be of particular interest to Ryland. Also have book spy on somebody. Book you say. We're trying to spy on someone. Tr Trelin. Trelin? Yeah. Uh, I didn't make any sense. Uh, we're <laughs> uh, we're spying on someone. We had the option to, so I guess we return the money. Uh, we could head uh, to the southern part of that uh, that place. It's from that uh, the note from the book. You can. That's true. Is that? what everybody wants to do i think so okay yeah because i only have three things here and we've completed one of them and the other one i am not sure what i was trying to write down <laughs> <laughs> okay so yeah then let's go here at one let's go for that one yeah <laughs> <laughs> what, which thing did we pick as zoned out for a second sorry okay. uh we are tr so the plan is okay so can you show the map can we see the map uh, I don't know if I set a, I don't have the map for the Southern continent in a position to really share it easily. I see. Um, but there's a kingdom on the Southern continent called Sulonia. Sulonia. That is... I just wanted to... There we go. Okay. Um, to the Sulonia. north... So, like, the capital of that kingdom is called Sulonia as well. Makes it a little easier for everyone there <laughs> to really deal with that. Um, there is northeast of that city is a town adjacent to a lake called Draconicia and it is primarily like 90% of the people living in that town are dragonborn ah interesting fucking yeah. hate dragonborn <laughs> motherfucker <laughs> Except for you, uh, Christine, you're cool. So, <laughs> yeah, it's different in that regard. Because um, typically, the majority of people in a place are humans, just because there are so, so many of them. But Or, I guess it depends on where you are, really. Uh, the forest is mostly elves and such. But typical, like, big cities are... 
human, primarily human. But this one, this town, is mostly dragonborn. All right. Sizir is probably a dragonborn, although maybe not. It's unclear from the note, because the note just says Sizir and Draconisia. That's it. Well, that's a start. It is. That's true. I, li I like that. We have a dragonborn. There's dragonborns up there. Mm -hmm. Probably have to kill stuff that's not dragonborn, hopefully. Indeed. I look over at Krishna, I'm like, who is... Who is the, like, the greatest foe of the dragonborn? And I tell you exactly the right answer. All right, and I agree. <laughs> I'm like, I bet you we'll kill some of those things. So yes, yes, there isn't a singular... Are they well-liked, typically? Entity. Well, it depends on where you are. Um, there's not like... So it's a popular race. But it's it, it's not like They're not me hated or instance. anything. Oh, yeah. um, they're... They're not, for example, like the Death Elves, uh, who are typically frowned upon above the, uh, you know, on the surface. You know that even though Death Elves are largely actually misunderstood and they're not all evil, uh, they tend to be viewed as evil because of what they tend to bring to cities above ground, which is death. Uh. But no, Dragonborn in the in 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 the majority, and there were probably a handful of places where Dragonborn are not well liked, because you run in that anywhere, really. Uh, somewhere there's some group that doesn't like Dragonborns, I'm sure, but. Right, it's not like 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 you said, dark elves or right. whatever. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, we can go up there help those yos. We can go south of the mm -hmm. of that city. So I, I, I'm uh, I'm gonna just throw it out to the the dragonborns. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what I think. Okay, great. We did my thing. Great, great. It is time to carry forward with that aspect of the story. Uh, and, uh... Yeah? Uh, just just to explain it to our new new gang member, because I heard, overheard him saying that he's going to be with us till we kill the Kraken, and, I, and I'll, I'll, I'll like, tell him, like, hey, we'll get there, I promise. He's got to do the side quest real quick, <laughs> and we'll do that one later. <laughs> just to uh, persuade him to stay with us. It's like in... Uh, uh, in uh, the old Baldur's Gate game, you get people that join you, and they're like, I, I need to do this. And if you just don't do it for long enough, they leave. <laughs> they yeah. leave the party. Yeah. <laughs> I convince them to stay. I'm like, hey, you gotta uh, help us out. That's funny. Yeah. Um, how, when are we like leaving to do that? Is it an immediate thing? It can be. Uh, the, yeah. ship, the ship can be. And by the way, uh, this is a marvel in technology that you've never seen before. Uh, Neat. Clank pulls out from one of the little compartments he has uh, on his person and pulls out a ship that's about the size of a matchbox car. And he sort of holds it out in front of him and he lets go of it and it stays where it is and it starts to lift up and float I don't know maybe 25 30 feet up in the air and it starts to expand it takes two minutes for this to expand all the way out but it becomes a full sized airship essentially cool. um, a ladder drops down once it reaches full size and everyone can, at their leisure, climb up. And you can... Uh, Krishna, who who is the current captain of the ship, can control it mentally. 
so you can park it in on, on the water like at the docks you can have it hover above or near the Karaki building or anywhere really uh, it, you can even given certain circumstances stash it underwater well hmm. it's just because uh, and Ryland doesn't know this just yet but uh, when it goes underwater the the interior sections of course are airtight and you don't have to worry about water seeping in from the outside unless it's damaged uh, and the on, on the deck there's a sort of magical 15 foot bubble type canopy that covers the whole space so you can you can still walk around on the deck underwater Over. yeah stuff can pass through the barrier except for like the water around it so like fish and stuff can can land on the deck <laughs> which makes for some interesting in theory anyway would make for some interesting times and very easy fishing technically speaking you just have like a net on the deck <laughs> just fly the ship <laughs> where the fish are okay yeah. I mean, I was yeah. just wondering, like, if I would have time to go explore the library even a little bit. You can, just, uh, you can talk to the to everybody and see if they want to wait a little bit. I mean, we don't have to. It's that big of a deal. Do we have anything like that? Do, do yeah. we have? I mean, do we have a research center on the on the ship or no? Because this is a popular area we're in right now, right? Uh, like, this would be good for you. The, That's a wizard. This would be this would be good. Well, off, but it's fine. You know, whatever. This would be a. I mean, it's it's a reasonably good library. One of the good ones. Right. And I, I'm just curious. I never played a a, a warlock. I mean, a wizard. Is that how you he's gather a, he's new a spells? Warlock. Oh, okay. He gets <clears> his power <throat> from. Uh, a being of some kind not necessarily from book learning uh, but in this case the tablet likes to know things ah yes <laughs> that's a great way of putting that I mean I'm down to find a computer set sack up for a little bit mm -hmm. beep boop boop beep on someone there you go Ah, ah! Side Here quests. Works. I can look for work. Who wants to go dancing with me? <laughs> <laughs> I will go to cook things. Okay, you can take some downtime if you wanted to. That's absolutely possible. How many days do we have until that? It was twenty-one days. Well, your ship can fly, so you don't have to worry about going in the water necessarily. Um, you have 24 ah. days before the 10 day of the Nereids. All right. Which isn't necessarily super relevant to any of what you have going on, but it's just a thing that happens. Like, there is... That's that's the one 10 day, so to speak, of the... Like, one... But that, that's really a 10 day period of the year where basically every seafaring person is landlocked except for us well yeah that's true <clears throat> but you're not seafaring you're airfaring huh. we're not really that either I don't even know what we are we just kill things <laughs> we go that's we true. go we go we arrive we fuck shit up we leave great Great, great. So you want to spend like a day or two here? Yes. You can get some final uh, final contact with the Karaki family, Kane, before you head out on your next adventure. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So how many days are you staying? How many days do you need? Uh. 
I really don't know. I was actually gonna, you know, have Gerald do the whole if I find anything of interest concept. All right, we'll do it. Like anything in particular? Okay, we'll do what? Two days. Two days. I'm going to. Yeah, I'm gonna dance and try to find different compartments on my body in a room by myself. <laughs> a little self exploration. Yeah, I, it's it's a job in its own. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, make sure you do your due diligence. <laughs> <clears throat> One more question. Don't leave any nook or cranny uh, unchecked. One more Cranial. question before we we do the deep dive into what each each person's doing for those two days. Um, and kind of as a refresher because it's probably forgotten that you have this um, but the book that had the note in it is specifically geared this is just serendipitous that Alex picked a warlock uh, but this book is specifically geared toward warlocks Like, it's it it, it 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 empowers warlocks. Oh hell! So if you want to give that to him, it is very early. You just met him, so whether you do or not is up to you. Um, Again, but it is, said he like he liked my dancing. Give okay. him anything he needs. He's a good <laughs> in my book. I'm basically I'll actually start making up stories about things that me and him have done before. <laughs> like, dude, you remember that one adventure? Oh, it was crazy. Here, take this book. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Even I'm concerned. <laughs> and I'm just like diving bad in an eye. This book that he hands you. Did did Clank have the book? Who had the book? No. Nah, I think uh I think Corey had the book. Did I? Yeah, sure, why not? Okay. That's fine. I had the book. Okay. The whole time. <laughs> the title of this book on the spine uh, is Elders. And the cover of the book appears to be made of some kind of uh, dark green leather. It's unclear as to what creature provided this leather, um, but it's very, what's I'm looking for here? <coughs> um, it's very soft, almost slimy mm. when you, when you kind of handle it. It's not actually wet, but it almost feels that way. Uh, <coughs> This book requires attunement, by the way, Mr. Ryland, but I will read to you what it does, okay? Okay. This book is not just any book. If the reader is a warlock, the book helps, uh, the book relays information concerning various patrons, maybe their own, but uh, certainly like different kinds of patrons and elders and the like and uh, the means of channeling patrons power while attuned to this book the warlock can cast warlock spells a total of three times rather than the typical two hey so you get three slots instead of two moving up in the world that's awesome uh it's a very rare magic item, by the way. Um, if the reader of this book is not a warlock, the attuned character gets access to the Eldritch Blast cantrip. But every time it is used, the caster must make a DC 12 wisdom saving throw or suffer from a short-term madness. Oh, God. But madness. You are, but you are a warlock, so you would get a third spell slot. <clears throat> so just keep that in mind. Make a note of that. 
So, do, do I have that book that the thing is happening? Yes, they gave you yeah. the book. Congratulations. Neat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You show up in town one day, fight a crack, and you get you're given like a extremely rare book that, uh, uh -huh. like, here you go. Oh, uh, thanks. What was your rare item, by the way? Uh, it was a ring of protection. Oh, nice. Okay. Good choice. Is that an actual item from any of the modules, or is that just something you made up? That's something I made up. Okay. Yep. I can send you the text for that if you want me to. Something. No, you're good. Okay. I, I, I typed most of it down. Okay, good. Good, good, good. All right. We got two days. We know that Ryland will be in the library doing reading and research and things. Oh, uh, did I find anything interesting there since there? Well, uh, we'll get to that in just a second. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Quetzal. Yep. You got two days around town. Two free days around a doja. What are you going to be doing on those two days? I'm going to go uh, find a place to cook. Okay. Mm, make some money. Sell some food. Yeah. Uh, there are numerous uh, taverns. There are seedier taverns on the docks. There are finer taverns closer to the Karaki Tower. Um, the fact that you're an, an arcane chef is <clears throat> sufficient that you could probably also find work in one of the wealthier family houses. So, how, like, are you just after the coin? Like, what's what's the... Yep, whichever one pays more. Okay. That would very likely be one of the pricier uh, tavern establishments. Give me a cooking check. Which I think for you is performance. Is that right? I mean, it's it goes off my intel my intelligence. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's intelligence. Charisma. We'll just do like an investing. It's the same. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Ten. <laughs> Roll a two. God damn it. <laughs> Roll a two. Uh, so you have two days, <clears throat> and wait, I have my chef's hat. Oh, give me a thing. That's for investigation, not for cooking. Oh, yeah, that's fine. All right, you, damn you, it. You rolled that for the purposes of getting the, the correct bonus. <laughs> uh, with a 10, <clears throat> okay, go ahead and um, you do well. Not amazingly well, but <coughs> you don't botch any dishes or anything like that. Don't poison uh, anyone. It's right. Don't poison anyone. <clears throat> you only know, rolled a two, which isn't great, but the bonus is high enough that you did <clears throat> reasonably well. This isn't like a difficult thing for you, because you're just we're talking about just cooking regular food. Like like it's not the complex magical food formula that you're trying to do. You're just cooking regular food. For regular wealthy people um give me actually i'll do it myself just because we'll see what happens okay great um, you make over the course of the two days 51 white draka nice which is for two days work ridiculously good pay because you could live pretty well with a gold like you could eat regular type food for 
a long time with 51 gold because food is like copper pieces, you know. Yeah. Excellent. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Kane. Um, I'll probably actually go to see my family after my talk with Althea. Okay. Anyone in particular? Or just everybody? Just everybody. I guess I'll, I would probably start with my mother. Okay. Um, is there a particular time of day that you initialize this conversation? Um, probably, like, in the evening, like, okay. once everybody's, like, gone home, no one's worrying about, like, business stuff. Okay, that's good. So you arrive... Um, the evening of the first day off uh, to the house, to your house, your big, stupidly big house, and you find your mother, Cassandra, in uh, the sort of, there's like a small area of her of, of like the master bed chamber that is sort of cordoned off with couches it's like a sitting area um, she's there and there is a glass of very expensive looking elven wine that is mostly empty when you arrive She, who, she was not expecting you, of course, and she looked at she, she looks at you with concern and faint hints of shame, perhaps, because she is very drunk. Gotcha. Very very drunk. She, she goes at first to kind of trying to hide the glass, but it doesn't work. <laughs> she kind of fumbles around with it a little bit and just sets it back on the little coffee table and says, Hector, I'm glad you're safe. I mean, I'm probably like it this is something that Kane is not used to doing mm -hmm. like like being like emotionally vulnerable or anything he's really just kind of a loss for words himself yeah um probably just gonna gonna rush like not necessarily rush up but just go up and just embrace her like give her a hug just like hold her t uh, tight. Yeah, she uh, she wasn't expecting that either, because you uh, that's not because that's not typical behavior. <laughs> yeah, uh, and she just breaks down. I say we both do because it's only been like a month or two. Like not even that. Like maybe maybe. 25 days or so. Well, I remember we said that there was at least a month I was uh, like ahead of everybody oh, who was coming right. up. right. You were. Okay, yeah. It, I mean, it, it's, it's, been, that, it's been a so few That was months. a month right there. Yeah, okay, that's fair. You're right, you're right, right, right. Yeah, so it's been... It's probably been at least two months, I would yeah, say. Yeah, that's fair. I, I don't have the precise time, but it yeah, it's been couple months still raw still raw yeah she hugs you back and just cries and cries and cries and then eventually she uh, calms down enough to 
to at least kind of pull away and kind of sit in silence waiting to see if he'll say anything. See, I'm probably just going to so just like apologize to her to alle- trying to alleviate some of the guilt. Even, even after what Thea says that yeah, it's still not enough to N- not make me feel guilty, right? And she says, "She says, no, it's not. It's not your fault. We we all didn't know that <coughs> Mateo was not Mateo at the time. There's no way we could have known that." So I'm going to get him. I promise I'm going to. Good. I hope you do. Yeah. I don't have it anything else. Yeah. I can think of. That's fair. <laughs> and then she she kind of hugs you again and. You you so, you like lead her to the the bed and she yeah probably to bed to, to make sure she get yeah. get some sleep and um, there is evidence that she hasn't slept in the bed a lot uh, given that that's where uh, your father died yeah. There is, you know, there's like a couple of blankets on one of the longer couches that has seen, that has obviously seen a little bit more use than the bed has. So, yeah. As you leave, um, you pass the, uh, in the hall. And she just gives you that sort of an understanding nod and makes her way to her own bedroom. Uh, so after that, I'm going to, I want to try to hunt, like find like, like the master servant or butler or whoever. Okay. Like whoever would be in charge of like sure. making sure that everything's kept well. Uh-huh. And I'm I'm want, going to instruct him to to begin acquiring all new like furniture, to decorations, everything. So maybe even hire like a like a crew of masons to like mm. ex, like expand or remodel the like their bedroom. So it's less. So it's a painful so yeah to try to okay so it's not the same room gotcha that he died in that it's uh, a new place that is hers the... maybe even like leave like maybe like make it the room itself bigger and then divide it and like have like a section that was the room as it was like around the bed mm. and then have like that be like an access from like the outside okay and then have like a new bedroom for her kind of thing. Gotcha. Yeah, you you do. So um, the sort of head butler, if you will, uh, is like nodding, and he takes a couple of notes, and he says, "Right away, sir. I will begin this as soon as we can." Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> You're welcome. <clears throat> Let's see. Krishna. Yes, sir. You got two days in a dojo. What would you like to do in those two days? Is there a coliseum? Not in a dojo, no. Uh, there are things uh, that you can do. Meditating, I'm sure. 
Uh, in fact, if you want to work with Clank, uh, there are there are wizards in Adoja that can cast water breathing. And nice. Like they start the next day. Um, working on getting the sunken materials out of the ship to see what can be salvaged. Um, I mean, take it, taking our ship down there would expedite the process about like tenfold. You could do that too. It's true. Uh, Just plus with with Clank, who doesn't have to breathe underwater, and you given a water breathing spell, and you're both strong individuals, especially when Clank is bigger. Uh, so it's that's something that you can do if you wanted to. You don't have to help with that process. No, yeah, it's not cool, yeah. Um, you can do whatever you want to, but they would they would be appreciative of that for sure. Nice, yeah. Okay. Clank, are you helping with that, or? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's not like totally. Any, all two days are going to be spent just doing that, but that's something that you can certainly help with to to help the next part of the process. I mean, it makes sense. I I don't need to breathe. I do like the weekend at Bernie's thing. I like walk when he's like walking underneath the the water, <laughs> dancing, kind of like that. <laughs> Clank. Oh, wait, hang on. Krishna, is there anything else you want to do in between those kind of moments? Not that I can think of, no. Okay. That's fine. Clank, you had mentioned wanting to spend some time alone. Uh, it's going to be a... So, roll with me on this one. I want to know what makes... Like, I guess whatever I would need to do to start learning how to maybe fly. Uh, so, like, either make to be able to alter it. Like, maybe you re read what the ship can do because it can fly mm -hmm. and it can fulfill itself. And maybe look at those books uh, mm -hmm. potentially help me do that. Okay. Excellent uh, thing to pursue. Uh, I will say that because you took some damage, oh, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's it's one white drop up per hit point of the upper twenty five percent. So however much that is, just make sure you, you get that cost. Yeah, I have. Let's see, where did I do with our money? One second. There it is. Great. So Clank begins researching the means of flight. Uh, now, you have heard, if you remember from the um, arms dealer that you got your hand blasters from. Yeah. There is a legendary uh, attachment for artifice for like for someone of your race uh, called the jetpack that will give you flight uh, there are other means of course of achieving this but if you're looking for actual um, mechanical technological bits to fly then that's the primary way that you know how to do or like no, right. you know of, um, it would be a very expensive thing to make. Uh, given even if you had the plans to make it, it would be very expensive to make. Uh, oh, and real quick, Bob, mm -hmm. you have fourteen thousand five hundred and sixty-two white draka. Uh, from, <laughs> and I was supposed to give this to Eli. But I'll give it to Alex instead. And I'll look at I look at uh, it's fourteenth year. I'll post it. Okay. Um, it's, it's kind of split up. So uh, 
Yeah, I, I look over at uh, what's your name, Alex, on here? Rowan. I look over at Ellie and I say, I really, really appreciate that you enjoy yeah. my dancing. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to always cheer for me every time I dance to give me a plus one to performances when we're together. Ah, uh, how you like that, Gerald? Does it sound good? <laughs> so, so, so you're gonna uh, sure? Why not? All right. I I also hand him fourteen thousand five hundred and sixty-two white draka. He probably just stares at you, dumbfounded. <laughs> That's a lot of cash. And, and I look at him and say, "Remember, cash. you got to cheer for me." <laughs> I. Uh, what? <laughs> okay. I'll take that out of the bag. <laughs> Literally like a like a king's treasure. <laughs> yeah. For reals. Uh it's a lot. Now you you started with ten thousand, I think. If I'm not mistaken. Uh so yeah, you're up to twenty four <laughs> five sixty two. <laughs> nice. Twenty four five sixty two? Yeah. All right. That's pretty dang sure. good. All right. Hey, I, I, it's not my, it's not my money. It's their money. They want to give it to you. That's up to them. <laughs> yeah, because we we have like twenty four thousand in the. Is anybody gonna stop Tommy from just giving me all his shit? <laughs> he's oh. already gave me the book. He's trying to. He's giving all the way the money. And... Well, that's fine. I got my money. I don't care. Yeah. This <laughs> this is not the party fund. The party fund. We're good. We have. We have 350 green Draka and 24,000 white Draka. So we're fine. That genuinely means nothing to me. I don't know what the values of these things are. So a white Draka is essentially a gold piece? White's gold. Uh, um, so, okay. Which, what, what's green? Green's like how many? Green is worth 100 white Draka. So it's okay. essentially... 100 gold per I guess green. Benjamin yeah you could call it that sure Me. Um, yep 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 I'll get that table for you too it's pretty handy because there are okay. different quantities as, as you go higher <laughs> he said, "Is everyone going to stop him for giving me everything?" <laughs> <laughs> well, nope. I mean, man. to be fair, I don't... we gotta get you looted. Uh, well, that's true. <coughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Um, Clank, give me a give me an investigation roll. A what roll? Investigation. All right. Oh, no, no. That's not good. Okay. Rolling um, forwards tonight. You begin to dig deeper into what information you have access to uh, concerning uh, artifices and the means of flight. Obviously, um, the easiest way to get flight would be through some external magic item. Like uh, a broom of flying or I wanted I wanted it to be part of me. Sorry, Gerald dead. Uh, did to get him? No, I just hit, hit the book and it fell over. Craziness. Um there are other than the jet pack, you don't really know of any other external way to do that. All um, right. Other than like attunement items that you can wear. Like, Would I know uh, around? So an item like that, it would have to be only in certain towns. You know, obviously it's not going to be some back in a town, but 
I guess one where artifice, artifices or um, gnomes or right. The easiest, or rather, the 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 best place that you know of that might have a jetpack, even like at all, uh, would be the the primary city of the gnomes, which is Ganrock. Which is a place that you spent a lot of time in your younger days. When you went. Ah, uh, uh, yes, when I was a toaster. I remember. You... <laughs> <laughs> I was adventurous then. <laughs> when, when, when I hung when, out. When, he was a brave my vacuum. When I was with my vacuum and stuff. Uh, I had first created. Get out. Get was, out of my house. It was there. It was about time to go. No time for love, Dr. Jones. <laughs> I think that is oh right okay. we gotta get to Ryland's library excursion uh, is there anything I might have that... figured out what I wanted to focus that in by the way you did? yes Okay. I was thinking that I could utilize the uh, tablet Okay. Like, and what it knows from being, like, just old. And utilize, like, the nice book collection to find a more effective way to use uh, Eldritch Blast. To possibly increase it from a D10 to a D12. Ooh. Oh, nice. That is intriguing. So that, in this particular library, would be very difficult, but not impossible. So give me an investigation check. Let's see what happens. Nice. 19 is not bad. So Ryland begins with the help of Slate uh, to find books of any information that he can find about warlocks and uh, studies on the magic that they use and kind of how it functions. Uh, you don't it's it's not enough yet to up it to a d12 um but what it does do is it will give you okay let's try this okay let's say that this knowledge will allow you to roll eldritch blast attacks with advantage uh, when I'm trying to think here how, how this would uh, kind of play out I don't, I'll, I'll have to maybe work that as part of uh, Slate's thing but uh, maybe it'll be like a, a, a triggerable ability where you can like activate it in four a number okay. A number of rounds equal to your charisma modifier, because you're 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 charisma based, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, like a, a number of rounds equal to your charisma modifier, you would be able to roll your eldritch blast attacks with advantage. Uh, however, many that is, I guess. It, what is your charisma? It'd be four. Okay. And that would be once per long rest i think cool yeah yeah that's cool i like that that's clever reward that good deal um before we end this session because it's getting late and we're just about out of time anyway uh toward the end of the second day 
a creature. You've you've all heard of these. Maybe you've even seen them, but it's you don't see them for very long, and it's never uh, like necessarily a bad thing. But um, a little fey creature. It's called a brownie. It's like a little furry. Uh, Twelve I foot stole tall. The baby. Twelve foot tall, like furry dude. Huh? Anyone? Uh, no. He is <laughs> throwing down some prom willow references here. <laughs> uh, the brownies of our time are the what is essentially the postal service. They carry messages from place to place, uh, and one of them arrives wearing a lot of, uh, they wear a lot of one type of clothing, whatever that may be. So it might be hats or socks or belts or shirts or whatever. Uh, very, like, novel Dobby-like. It's not always socks, though. It could be anything, really. Uh, this one happens to be wearing several layers of shirt. And it tracks the group down. And it, it says, uh, I have a, a message for uh, Clank. Clank Jadar. Who is, which one of you is Clank? And I'm over there just clanking around as a robot. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> that fucking trash can over there. <laughs> I think it's the uh, I think it's the Dragonborn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I do say it's me. I say it's me, a clank. It's me. <laughs> it's me, a clank. <laughs> oh goodness. Uh, oh, let me make a quick oh, yeah, that's here. <laughs> What do you got for me? Brings clank message. The message is on official stationery of a group that you are familiar with called the Task Force. Um, task T-A-S-C, of course, standing for the Technology and Security Council, uh, which is a sort of segment of the GNOME government that oversees oh. management of technology and, like, who has it and all of that fun stuff. All right. Uh, they, you also know of this group as the group that controls the uh, magic enhancing constructs that they have to send out not frequently but every now and then to recover like stolen technology and stuff like that so all right so they know what i'm about they know it's, my insides yes the fact uh that like you are aware of this but you are registered as an artifice with the task group uh because you are technically a culmination of magic and technology combined to create life, essentially, uh, <clears throat> in various various ways. Uh, the note says it sort of starts with you know clank, not dear clank or anything, just clank like semicolon, like it's a very formal kind of letter and uh, it says your presence is required in Ganrock within 20 days an investigation has been opened since 
Evander's body has gone missing. Oh, hell. And that's where we're in it. Papa, no! Pa no, Papa! Pa no, Papa! <laughs> Is where we will end it. Pa -pa -pa. I hope everyone's had fun. That's good. Dig it. I've had fun. I hope you all have too. <sighs> I didn't die. That was good. Any <laughs> session I don't die in is always good in my book. Fair. It's quite fair. Um. So we'll be meeting again in two weeks, if everyone's good with that. Yep, I'm good. Cool. I'm yeah. Think, I'm trying to think, what day is that? Actually. That's good to me. Ooh. I may not be back. I'll be in New York from the 27th until, like, the 4th. Oh, okay. Gotcha. That would be the second that we'll be playing again. That's okay. Yeah. Um, okay. That's okay. So yeah, maybe because you're would be a big component of that story arc if you decide to pursue it right away. Um, we'll see. Twenty days might actually be enough time for you to get down to the southern continent and back. Maybe we'll see. I'll I'll huh. I'll have to figure out some distances and stuff. Finagle it. Yeah, we'll be all right. Yeah. Come back or like, oh, yeah, we uh, we just didn't do that story. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, I guess. We did not give a fuck about your papa's body. <laughs> <laughs> no, papa. Yeah. Um, I will have, I, I will somebody. write up a more official, uh, like, actually what it says. That was kind of the cliff notes because uh, they're very – uh, precise in their wording, so I will I will get some more precise data for you then. Um, I may push it out so you'll have time if you wanted to go do the other thing first. You can, but this is this is a this will be a time sensitive one. So, all right, all right, all right, all right. Like, just lean into the mic. Yeah, there. yeah, I did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes, I did. All right. <laughs> don't, don't, don't do that. <laughs> no, yeah, don't. <laughs> All right, now we have D and D ASMR up next. <laughs> Late night. <laughs> I cast magic missile into the darkness. I cast magic <laughs> missile into the darkness. <laughs> oh. oh no! It didn't work. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We'll. Uh, Sleep well, and we'll see you in two weeks. <coughs> or later. Later, guys. Later, later films. Later. Hey, Tommy. Yeah. Tommy, are you off? All right. Well, he did. He must have. Yep. He, he, he must have if you want to play Seven Days to Die. <laughs> well, you, Corey, you'll...